Assalamualaikum boys and girls and welcome to the very first episode of Storytime with me, Sophia. For the next few weeks, we are going to be learning about the prophets of Islam. In the Quran, Allah mentions 25 prophets by name, but there are thousands more. Prophets were sent from Allah to teach the people about worshiping Allah and Islam. They warns people about the punishments of worshiping idols and that they should avoid sin. They taught people about the day of judgment in a time that people thought they could live forever and ever with their wealth, their castles, and their beautiful gardens. People were not happy when the prophets came to them to teach them about Allah. They did not believe in Allah's miracles no matter how many signs Allah gave them. As Muslim boys and girls, we should believe in all of the prophets. We should never question what they have taught us as they are the true messengers from Allah and were chosen by Allah to help us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is Allah's last prophet and the greatest example of how we should try to live our lives. Today, we are going to learn about the very first prophet. As a matter of fact, he was the very first man ever created, Prophet Adam alayhi salam. When Allah the Almighty decided to create Adam, he addressed his angels and told them to bow down before him. He told them he was going to create a messenger on the earth. The angels said to Allah the Almighty, Will you also create those who will make mischief and shed blood? <gasps> Allah created Adam, making him 60 cubits tall. That's almost 90 feet tall. When Allah created him, he said, Go and greet that group of angels and listen to their reply. For it will be your greeting and the greeting of your offspring. So Adam alayhi salam said to the angels, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. The angels said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and Allah's mercy be upon you. Thus, the angels added to Adam's greeted with the expression, wa rahmatullahi. And any person who will enter paradise will resemble Adam in both his appearance and his figure. But, People have shrunk in size since the time of Adam. That's why we don't go around like giants. Adam opened his eyes and saw all of the angels bowing down before him. This was to show respect and did not mean that the angels were worshipping Adam. Prostrating in worship is only done for Allah. There was one among them, however, who was standing at a distance, not bowing down. Adam did not know what kind of creature it was that would not bow down before him, nor did he know its name. Iblis, better known as Shaitan, was standing with the angels so as to be included in the command given to them, but he was not one of them. He was a mischievous jinn, and as such, he was supposed to be inferior to the angels. He was trying to hide amongst them. <gasps> this Iblis refused to be among those that bowed down. And Allah said, O oh, Iblis, what is your reason for not being among those who bow down? And Iblis said, I am not the one to prostrate myself to a human being whom you created from sounding clay of altered black smooth mud. Allah said, Then get out from here, for verily you are an outcast or a cursed one. Verily the curse shall be upon you till the day of resurrection. Ooh. Iblis tried in vain to justify his refusal. Shall I prostrate to one whom you created from clay? Iblis said. See, those who you have honored above me, I will seize and mislead his offspring by sending them astray. <gasps> was he threatening Allah? Adam was following what was happening around him. 
He had feelings of love and awe and astonishment. Such deep love for Allah, which we all should have. Allah who had created and glorified him and who had made his angels bow down before him. Adam was surprised by this, this Iblis creature who hated him without even knowing him and who imagined himself better than Adam without having proved that he was worthy. What a strange creature Iblis was and how strange was his excuse for not bowing down before Prophet Adam. He imagined that fire is better than clay, but how did he get such an idea? Such knowledge is exclusive to Allah, the one who creates the fire and the clay and who knows which is better of the two, only Allah. From the dialogue, Adam realized that Iblis was a horrible and mischievous creature. He then knew that Iblis would be his eternal enemy. He was greatly astonished at Iblis's audacity and Allah's tolerance. Immediately after his creation, Adam witnessed the large amount of freedom that Allah gave to his commissioned creatures. All he asks is to be worshipped and respected. Once we do as we are told, boys and girls, and we follow his simple rules, we will be blessed. Allah knew that Iblis was not going to obey him and bowing down before Adam. Allah could have totally annihilated him and turned him into a handful of dust. Yet, Allah gave him absolute freedom, even the freedom to refuse Allah's commands. He grants them the freedom of denial, disobedience, and even disagreements with him. You see, Allah's kingdom will not diminish if the disbelievers do not believe in him, nor will it be extended if many people believe in him. On the contrary, the disbelievers will lose and the believers will gain. But Allah, Allah the Magnificent is above all of that. Almighty Allah granted Adam the power to know the natures of all things and to summarize them by names. That is a bird, that is a star, that is a tree. All of the names we know today, mashallah. Can you remember what you were like as a little itty bitty baby boy or girl, now learning how to speak, now learning what's a cat and now learning what's a dog? Allah created everything and so Allah named everything. Allah implanted in Adam an insatiable need and love for knowledge and a desire to pass on his knowledge to his children. This was the reason for his creation and the secret of his glorification. After Adam had learned the names of all the things along with their properties and their uses, Allah presented them to the angels, subhanAllah. The angels knew that Adam was a creature who knew what they did not know and that his capacity to learn was his noblest quality. His knowledge included knowledge of the Creator, which we call faith, as well as the knowledge he would need to inhabit and master the earth. The Prophet Adam knew the names of everything. Oh, wow, mashallah. Now, Hawa was created from the shortest left rib of Adam while he was sleeping, and after a while she was clothed with flesh. That is why Allah the Exalted said, O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person, Adam. And from him, he created his wife, Hawa. And from them both, he created many men and women. That includes you and I. Many of you boys and girls have heard the stories of Adam and Eve. As Muslims, we refer to the wife of Prophet Adam as Hawa, not Eve. Adam and Hawa were admitted to paradise, and there they lived the dream of all human beings. They were surrounded by luscious gardens and valleys, beautiful streams and springs, and Allah allowed them to enjoy everything except one single tree. That might have been the tree of pain 
or the tree of knowledge. Allah forbade them that they were to give abode in paradise. But come not near this tree or you both will be of the wrongdoers. It was just one tree. Adam and Hawa understood that they were forbidden to eat the fruits of that tree. Adam was, however, a human being and man tends to forget. I'm sure we're all a little guilty of forgetting things every so often, right boys and girls? It's very important though that we don't forget the most important things. Now, Adam's heart changed and he was a little weakened. Iblis, the troublesome jinn, summoned all the envy within Adam and took advantage of Adam's humanity to trick him. He started to whisper to him day after day, twisting his mind. Shall I guide you to the tree of immortality and the eternal kingdom? He kept going on and on and on and he said to them, Your Lord did not forbid you. If you eat from this tree, you could become angels. Or you could become immortals. Shaitan lied to Adam and Hawa and kept pushing them and pushing them to commit sin. They knew Allah had forbid them. Allah had given them everything they could have ever dreamed of. But why? Why did this one tree tempt them so much? It's like when your mom's cook up and a lovely Sunday lunch with the stewed chicken and the rice and the macaroni pie and the cakes and the sweets. And then she says, you can have it all, but no soda, no Coke, no sweet drink. I know how hard it is. You just want the soda. You just want the fizz and the taste. Well, boys and girls, that's shaitan whispering in your ears. When your parents tell you no, you must always listen to them. Sometimes that soda can be very, very bad for you. Just like the fruits of this tree were for Prophet Adam alayhi salam swore by Allah to them both saying, Verily, I am one of the sincere well-wishers for you. Surah 7, Ayahs 20 and 21. Adam asked himself, What will happen if I eat from this tree? It might truly be the tree of immortality. His dream was to live forever in the pure innocence of paradise. Years went by and Adam and Hawa were preoccupied with thoughts of that tree. But then, one day, <gasps> they decided to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. Oh my goodness, a stug for Allah. Allah had made that tree forbidden. They could eat from all of the other trees. Why, oh why did they need to eat from this one? Shaitan had tricked them into thinking this tree would benefit them. Oh, they forgot. They forgot that Allah had warned them not to approach it and that Iblis was their sworn enemy. Why, oh why would they disobey Allah's one request? Adam stretched out his hand and picked one of the fruits and offered it to Hawa. And they both ate from the forbidden tree. Adam had hardly finished eating when he felt his heart contract and he was filled with pain, sadness, and shame. The surrounding atmosphere had changed and the internal music had stopped. He discovered that he and his wife were now naked. So they both started cutting tree leaves with which they could cover themselves. Before they ate from the tree and had committed that horrible, horrible sin, their bodies were covered with beautiful lights. But all of that had disappeared. Allah.